Howdy. And then, wow, this is moving along. We're at the end of chapter one. This is video four. I showed you these slides last week. I just want to um, emphasize them. I want you to notice the terminology for reasonable. Then I want you to think about the fact that the FTC was overruled in LabMD because of some indeterminate standard of reasonableness, okay? I want you to understand the importance of offense public policy. I want you to understand the, the cigarette rule that was uh, uh, the Supreme Court ruled on this and then later codified into law. And this is the three elements that the Un, now be clear that the unfairness principle, uh, the unfairness uh, prong of Sec FTC Act Five can be used in data breaches. Injury must be substantial, must not be outweighed by any offsetting consumer or competitive benefits, and it's one that they could not have reasonably have avoided. Uh, this has been used in cybersecurity cases. The FTC looks for actual harm. That's one of the exciting things. If you want a paper topic, what constitutes actual harm? Do you have to show actual monetary loss or physical loss, or is the mere threat? Then I want you to remember the key significance of the Wyndham case. It solidified the power to bring actions, but it was heard by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Uh, the process of agreeing to a consent order or consent decree, I want you to be thinking about, and I, I'm, I'm grappling this with this now, so I need your help. How do we start summarizing all these bad practices and we began to see where we the courts repeatedly talk about this you're storing passwords in clear text hello this has uh, not been a good idea for about 20 years you're allowing simple passwords to the system ditto you can't use firewalls and similar standard cybersecurity technology would you go home and not have a locks on your front door and a security system uh, you didn't oversee your vendors, your third-party vendors. You're going to have them let them have access. You, you, um, and you failed to take reasonable measures. And then here's the big question of the day for this semester, for most of your career. What constitutes reasonableness? So here's the key takeaways. What constitutes unfair or deceptive data security? Where can you, can you get that? Trace it back to FTC Article 5, Century Oaks Law. Da -da 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 -da. I've said this. The number of deficiencies you are beginning to see, that's why I want you to look at the key lessons. The significant risk of injury is sufficient to meet likely to cause requirements. And at the same time, oh hello, the FTC does not have a formal definition of sensitive information. We're getting back to this. We don't really have a good definition of privacy. We don't really have a definition of sensitive information. We kind of know what it is. We, we see it and we recognize it, but it's hard to put parameters around it. And then, this is just, I'm not going to read this to you, this is just typical type stuff that you should be looking for in your commonalities. And I think the fifth one we didn't talk about in the lecture, but B2B, business to business, is also accountable under FTC. Businesses are consumers. I kind of like the FTC. All right? And with that, we finished Chapter 1. On to Chapter 2. Thank you for staying with me.